Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make this constant adjustable current LED driver board. I'll show you the schematics and the PCB layout. We'll take a look at it in the lab. If that sounds interesting, stick around. I'll show you how to make it. So this board is meant to take in five volts USB power and output. In this particular case, I have eight 2.8 volt LEDs in series in four rows. So it boosts to upwards of around 24 volts. I have this potentiometer with an on off switch. The on enables the boost converter. And as I adjust this, it varies a 10K potentiometer, which sets the gain in the current sense feedback. So let's go ahead and take a look at the schematics first. All right, so let's briefly look at the circuit schematic. We have a boost converter over here and some sort of amplifier circuit over here. And if you've never made a Bucker Boost regulator, um, this is generally what they look like. An inductor, diode, some input capacitance, output capacitance, some resistor capacitors to set some things and provide some comp compensation. And then there's generally some way to feed back into the controller to control the output. And usually what that is, is, you know, on your output, you'll have a voltage divider that'll make a voltage. Uh, in this case, it's 1.229 volts. And the this controller will do whatever it needs to do to keep this voltage at 1.229 volts. So the idea with this circuit is rather than controlling that with voltage, we will get 1.229 volts with current. And that's what this amplifier over here is doing. If you haven't worked with op amp circuits, there's a few basic amplifier uh, topologies you should look into. So here's a website with the top 10 fundamental op amp circuits, uh, the voltage follower buffer, the inverting op amp, which gives you the output is negative, the input voltage times R2 over R1, the non-inverting op amp. This is what is on the schematic we were just looking at. It's what I'm using in my circuit. Non-inverting summing amplifier, inverting summing amplifier, differential amplifier, so on and so forth. There's a lot you can do with op amps, but if you haven't looked at the basic op amp circuits, this is a good place to look. For. So that's what we have here. We have a non-inverting amplifier. And I, I put a little note here. This is a good idea, by the way when you're making schematics is, is put notes here. I generally would have put the input range and the output range, but I actually, I don't even know what those are. I, I bet made this so quick, I didn't think about it. But what I have going on here is I have the output of this boost converter, which is boosting to somewhere around 30 volts, but it'll boost to whatever voltage it needs to do to maintain the constant current I want. Anyways, it's boosting to around 30 volts. It's going to this connector. This is the positive side. And then I have four return lines. And what I have are eight LEDs in series, uh, four times in parallel. So, and these are the returns for that. They come down to right here and they go through this sense resistor. There's some filtering. And here's where the gain happens. Uh, some more filtering and then I go to this feedback pin. Typically in a buck or boost regulator like this, you would have some sort of like a voltage divider here and you would set these resistor values to give you 1.229 volts um, at whatever voltage you want here. So if you want five volts, you would set this voltage divider to give you 1.229 volts. We are doing this in current mode. And we're using this sense resistor. 
So let's suppose that none of this um, circuit is here. All we are doing is using this um, sense resistor to feed back over here, measure current, and um, work everything out that way. So we need 1.229 volts here. Let's say I want one amp. I want a constant current of one amp. Uh, 1.229 volts divided by one amp. That means I would need a, at one amp, 1.229 ohms. That would give me the voltage I need for this circuit to work. Now, what's the problem with that? Uh, what's the power dissipated here? So now we have one amp here and we have 1.229. Uh, that is 1.229 watts dissipated right here. And uh, that is kind of doable. You could put a bunch of resistors in parallel and have a bunch of copper and you can dissipate one watt on some resistors. Um, but the whole point of this circuit is uh, at five volt input, I wanted to use a USB power for this. So we'll say max of like 10 watts, five volts, two amps coming in. I don't really want to waste one watt over here. 10 watts of LED power is, is quite a bit. Nine watts is, um, you know, not bad, but it's 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 significantly less. So uh, that's the whole purpose of this circuit is to avoid dissipating all that power on this resistor. So I can use a small resistor and boost the voltage here to feed back into my boost converter. And it also provides another benefit. I want to make this LED driver circuit, I want to make it dimmable. And the way I'm doing that is I'm adjusting the gain because you can see R14 here. The gain is one plus R10 over R14. And if I put a resistor in parallel, a variable resistor, a potentiometer, and I adjust that, that will adjust this gain and will adjust the voltage fed back here, which will adjust the brightness. There is still a little bit of power dissipated here, so you know, make sure your resistor can dissipate that power. Um, yeah, nothing particularly uh, special here. Let's look at the PCB. So here's the PCB. It's pretty simple. It's two-sided. Here's kind of the layout. I've got the input five volts ground coming in here through my inductor through this diode. Here's my connector going out to the LEDs. So five or in this case, somewhere around 30 volts goes out. Here's my return paths. These resistors are in case uh, I need to do any adjustments. I have a switch over here. Uh, where is that? I have a switch right here to enable this circuit so I can leave it USB plugged in. And when I flip that switch, it enables this and turns everything on. And I have the inputs for my potentiometer over here. That's not a board mounted, it's uh, those are wires going to that. If you haven't laid out a buck or boost converter, a couple things uh, you really want in low impedance paths through your your power nodes you want to keep everything very tight so over here we have the sense resistor and you always want to route your traces back from your sense resistor like this uh, and what that's doing is it's keeping this out of the um, power paths let's take a look at the data sheet for the boost converter really quick Okay, pretty typical data sheet. They'll show you, you know, your basic circuit to build with this. And see right there, there's your voltage divider feedback pinout. 
a block diagram. Like, you, like I was saying, you know, there's your 1.229 volts. There's your error amplifier, which drives your PWM control, which drives the switch, which sets your voltage. And they're going to show you an example a circuit. And hopefully they will show you. I didn't even look at it here. Okay. So they don't really show you a detailed layout, but they will say they'll show you a layout example. And they're going to show you the most important things you need to keep in mind. So bypass capacitor, put it close to pin two. Okay. So always, always reference this when you're laying out your board. So let's turn this on and probe around a little bit. The first place I'm going to probe is between the output of our regulator and the return to the top of our series resistor. So basically across all these. When we first turn it on at low current, we have pretty significant ripple and that starts to go away as the power goes up. And right about here, you'll notice an audible ringing on the regulator. And that sound turns off right about there. So our voltage goes up not too much. Interesting numbers here. So our voltage across the LEDs now keep in mind, this is eight LEDs in series in four parallel rows. So we go from 20 volts to, we'll crank it all the way up. And I'm not sure what that brightness is doing to the camera. So we go from 20 volts to 23.1. Now we will set the potentiometer at a known resistance. We'll check the input and output power by measuring the voltage across the sense resistor. We'll be able to calculate the current and we'll measure the voltage at the output of the boost regulator. And I'll put all the uh, formulas on the screen. The purple trace is the voltage across the sense resistor and the yellow trace will be the voltage on the output of the boost regulator. 18.5 millivolts on the sense resistor, 21.47 volts on the output of the boost regulator at 853 ohms. We're now at 2.25K ohms, 48.2 millivolts on the sense resistor, 22.28 volts on the output of the boost regulator, five watts on the input. 3.85K ohms, 75 millivolts, 22.9 volts. 8.58 watts on the input. 4.82 K ohms. 93.7 millivolts on the sense resistor. 23.3 volts on the output of the boost regulator. 10.78 watts on the input. Taking a look at the thermal imager, I've got the power turned up to the max, somewhere around 11 watts. And you can see the hottest point on the board is around 67 degrees. On the regulator, there's some hot spots on the inductor and diode. And the max temperature on the LEDs is around 71 degrees, which isn't very hot for an LED. They can get much, much hotter. this video pretty useful little circuit and it could actually be made quite a bit smaller if you wanted to 
There's a lot of unused real estate. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I've got some upcoming electronics projects. I've got a 600 watt buck boost converter that I'll be running two of those in parallel. I've got a flyback converter that I've been working on for a little bit. So thanks for watching and I will catch you guys later.